Well, some really interesting conservation news uh, coming from the Canadian Cattlemen's Association and their work on the prairie landscapes when it comes to species at risk. And a real pleasure to uh, be joined by Dwayne Thompson. He is the environmental chair for the uh, Cattlemen's Association. Dwayne, I know you've, you, you're you going crazy out there. I uh, really appreciate you spending some time with us and talking about uh, what's happening with you folks uh, today. You bet, Michael. Thanks for having us. So um, I guess the big news is that the federal government has come to the table with $1.27 million in terms of a grant. And this is money that uh, your group, along with a number of other partners, will be putting to use on uh, specific species at risk projects. And and I guess maybe really targeting on, on sage grouse. Is that correct? That's right, Michael. You know, this is uh, this is uh, the second round of the Species at Risk uh, Partnership on Agricultural Land, known as SARPEL. Uh, the previous one was a five-year um, agreement, and now we've got another one that takes us on to March of uh, 2023. So what specifically in terms of, of the projects that um, you have earmarked for this coming year and, and uh, I guess, boots on the ground in terms of improving habitat for this uh, endangered uh, species? Well, you know, the uh, as ranchers and people on the land, we, have, we always have a, uh, it's a very close to our heart that uh, this sort of thing is, is um um, part of our life and uh, having the sage grouse and, and, and finding ways of, of making it that they're not as endangered as, as they have been in the past. We've made strides in making them in, in improving their uh, um, lot in life. And, uh, and now this program is, is going to um, further develop that. We um, are going to focus, of course, in that uh, in that southeast corner of Alberta, where the, the largest number of the sage grouse are, and um, and previously there were um, uh, many many ranchers took advantage of the of the program because uh, you know we had 24 ranches establish uh, 45 habitat conservation strategies in place, and uh, they they were well received. And it was a real win-win deal. And I think that's the biggest takeaway from this is, is this program was really developed well for a win-win deal with people on the land, uh, you know, encompassing uh, 189,000 acres to try to help out and uh, secure the greater sage groves. Yeah, I, I guess it can't be un- overstated the importance it is to have not only financial partners and 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 big conservation groups come to the table but none of this works unless the landowners get on board and and i guess in in that vein duane uh, what's it been like to work with other ranchers and and you know when you come to them and say look maybe you have to change the way you do business a little bit in order to protect um a, a species at risk how do do they get excited about it or is it is it a bit of a struggle to kind of explain to them what needs to happen you know it's um there would certainly be some that would be uh um that it would change the way they do things but quite frankly a lot of the people that have um uh, worked with the Sarpel were, you know, the reason that they got into it be, is because it wasn't a great change to a lot of the things that they were doing. And, uh, and, and I think the fact that I don't think there was one dropped out of it. They, everybody stayed with it. And even after the agreement are continuing to practice the methods that, you know, were suggested and, and that they, that they endorsed and showed that they were doing a lot of things in, in, um already and so i think um as i say there probably there would be some that some considerable changes would happen but uh the fact that it's been so well received really shows that um it's not a massive change that ranchers are undergoing to help this uh this initiative so can you give us a sense of what what happens, what needs to happen on the ground in order for um, sage grouse to be productive and, and actually stay where they've been, where they've been encouraged to nest and that type of thing? Sure. Well, they have a, you know, they have a natural area where the, where the sage grows and, uh, 
and they um, they're they're kind of a sensitive little bird, and and so they um, the ranchers tend to uh, alter their grazing patterns so that the time when they're you know when they're when they're mating, and uh, it, that's when we want to try to keep them from um, disturb being disturbed, and uh, and then when it comes to the grazing practices, we want to make sure that the the sage is not taken out, and and uh, we maintain that habitat um, that the that the birds are most comfortable in. Obviously, uh, Dwayne, for a program like this to be successful, we talked about the in, uh, the involvement of the various ranchers, landowners. Uh, what specifically, when you go knocking on a door, are you asking them to do uh, in order to help ensure that uh, there's a fighting chance for the uh, sage grouse and other species at risk? Sure. Well, you know, there's there's a number of things that uh, have to go into the program, Michael. And, uh, you know, number one, they do a rangeland and riparian assessment to see where we're at, to make a benchmark, to where, a starting point. And then uh, they, they'll do a species inventory and just to see what's out there and, uh, and you know, how many of the sage grouse are on a particular producer's area. Um, the riparian protection, of course, is a high priority in, in many things that, that support a lot of different habitat and wildlife uh, portable electric fencing projects in order to try to um, um, protect the areas in certain times when when the um, sage grouse are maybe more sensitive than others to having animals around um, off-site water development so that uh, animals maybe are not in that riparian area and there and we um, maybe it'd be troughs or pipelines or uh, development in a in an area where they can uh, dig a, a dam and and make it so that the animals uh, are spread out and not putting so much pressure on on small riparian areas for their water source so when it comes to um, moving cattle off a certain uh, part of a ranch are, are, are ranchers compensated for that uh Duane, is that part of what this um grant money is being used for or is is there um you, you kind of just go in and and hey rancher can you can you do this out of the goodness of your heart hmm. no the, you know that's part of the compensation package of course it's a it's a package it's not it's not specifically to do any any one thing it's a it's a package of uh, that the that we work with any individual rancher uh, go through the assessment uh, come up with ideas of of how to uh, best meet the criteria of the program and and then implement it and so so there yeah there's a there's a compensation for the rancher and um and that way it, it's a win-win deal so that the uh, the habitat's being protected and the ranchers uh, being, it, you know, being compensated for the efforts he has to take to uh, uh, manage it, both his ranch and the, uh, and the program. So when you kind of look at the, at the 10,000 foot level at, at um, the land base and the number of ranchers, um, do you have a, a, a bit of a percentage of, of how many ranchers are participating and, and how many more potentially could come to the table and, and want to get involved uh, with this, Dwayne? We don't really have a, a target number or, you know, we've got 24 ranches that were in the initial program, 45 different uh, strategies were put in place. Um, it encumbered uh, 189,000 acres, and that that's a significant amount. And, you know, I guess I guess off the cuff, if we thought we could double that, that'd be uh, that'd be a really great starting point. That uh, we've got three years to accomplish that, and um, and if we can do that, I think it, it shows ranchers' commitment to the to the environment and to um, to the landscape. Oh, there's no question. Uh, it 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 takes um, a, a number of partners, as we've uh, indicated, to to come to the table and and pull something like this off. Uh, and and a, a big tip of the hat to you and and your association for all the work that you are doing on the land base uh, to bring back a a, a bird that uh, has had a tough time getting a, a foothold back in Alberta and in parts of uh, uh, south uh, southwestern uh, Saskatchewan. As well, yeah, 
And, you know, that's that's a good point, Michael, because, you know, I've got friends in the southwest and uh, and um, I was at one particular friend's place and, and uh, we went for a drive and he took, takes me up to a hill and he says, you see that? And here's here's the dancing hill where they where they do their dances. And, you know, it shows the pride that ranchers have in the habitat and the wildlife and the commitment they've got. It's a it's an inherent commitment. It's an inherent. The healthier our landscape is, the healthier the ecosystem is, the healthier our businesses are. And that uh, it just goes hand in hand. And and it really ranchers really are environmentalists. Yeah, it, it really is a cumulative effect, isn't it? I mean, you 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 say, okay, well, there's many um, species at risk in this area, but when you start to improve the habitat for one, others uh, tend to to benefit from that move as well, don't they? Yeah, absolutely. All right. We'll leave it at that. Dwayne, listen, thanks so much again for your time. Uh, best of luck with the program. And we look forward to hearing from you in the future on, on how things are progressing in terms of uh, bringing uh, more ranchers on board and in, and doubling that 189,000 acres. Uh, that's an awful lot of land, though. That's That's <laughs> outstanding. Well, thank you very much for taking interest in this, Michael. Um, the Canadian Cattlemen's Association, on behalf of them, I, I thank you for that and taking an interest in this program. Mm-hmm.